Eternal Return is a relatively complicated game, and it's kind of hard to get into when you're first starting out. So to help ease this process for new players, I've compiled a list of things that are things I wish I had known when I had first gotten into the game. Whenever a new player comes to me and asks, what's one thing you would tell somebody who's just starting out in the game, I always default to this first answer, and the first thing on our list is going to be finishing your weapon first. Completing your weapon first is the most important thing on pretty much every character and every build. Even if you don't intend to fight right away, having your weapon gives you the chance to defend yourself if anyone tries to pick on you early. And of course, having your weapon done gives you the opportunity to potentially kill somebody early who may not have finished theirs yet. Number two on this list is going to be that item rarity actually just doesn't matter. Too many times when I see new people start the game, I see them prioritizing gold and purple items that could be less effective in their build than potential blue items, thinking that just the rarity of the item means that it's so much better than what they have equipped. But in reality, that's just kind of not the case. A lot of blue items are actually quite good, and some purples are definitely better than the gold counterparts. At the end of the day, you should be picking the items that are the best stats for what you're trying to do. A spell amp build wants a spell amp blue or purple that fits their game plan better than, say, a laurel wreath. And even some blue gear can be really good, such as motorcycle helmet, Quantian, and most accessories stop at blue anyways, despite being at the end of their build tree. Number three on this list is the imported save plan feature. Most new players aren't aware of the fact that you can actually import save plans that other players have uploaded, and you can even sort it by how many uses and shares they have. If you're sick of using the recommended builds, and maybe you're not really confident in making your own builds yet, this is a great way to get builds from players who probably have played the game a lot longer. You can find the imported save plan feature by going to the save plans tab in the top of the main menu. From there, you'll be on the recommended tab, but there's a tab next to it called save plans. When you click on that, there should be a button next to the weapon type that says new plan and import save plan. If you click import save plan, it should take you to that whole menu, and then you can sort by newest or most shared or most used. Now number four on this list is actually just going to be a very quick food tutorial. Without getting into too many of the specifics, I would highly recommend you pick up every lighter and milk that you find around the map. Lighters are used for a huge variety of food, and can pretty much be used at any point in the game to at least secure a little bit of good food. Lighters are one of the most versatile tools when it comes to making food, with several branching paths along the lines of heated rocks, heated oil, and boiling water, which all lead to about four to five food options each. And now milk, on the other hand, is also really good for food too, because milk plus branches gets you butter. And butter plus a variety of things like potatoes, chocolate, and honey equals actually really good food, which rivals the lighter food that you can potentially craft. Either way, it's easy to just use it as a simple heuristic to just always take lighters and milk when you see them. Now, this next tip on the list is actually something that's pretty simple and is something that's covered in the basic tutorials, but most players don't really take it to heart. And at number five, it is that consoles are actually really powerful. If you've ever played a MOBA or any other sort of RTS type game, you know that vision is actually incredibly valuable. And in this game, consoles give you an opportunity to get vision for free in the entire zone that you're in. Consoles give you a huge advantage by protecting you from third parties. Seeing enemy teams coming from far away gives you a chance to position for an ambush or potentially run away. And next on the list is actually a concept that's a little bit less concrete, and that is the idea of power spiking and finishing your build. Power spiking in this game is a concept about knowing when you are at your most powerful at specific points in the game. When you've just finished your weapon, or when you get a couple of your core items on your build, that's when you are power spiking. That's when you know that you can start chasing those pings that are near you. You can start chasing that guy with a white weapon that's near you. That's when you're strong, compared to everyone around you. Now, similarly, you might also be power spiking right as you finish all six of your items. That's the biggest power spike in the game, because really, from there, every second you spend in the game can't be that much better of an improvement on your build. So it makes sense that some builds don't actually want to start chasing fights as soon as they finish their weapon. Some builds just want to finish all six of their items before they move on to chasing fights. Now, while that last concept was more of an abstract idea, this next concept is sort of just a keybind that I wish I had known when I had first started playing, and that is that it is possible to drop a single item from a stack by pressing Control right click on it. This is especially useful if you're playing a team mode, like either duo or squad, and say you want to split a stack of food with your teammates, Control right clicking the stack several times would let you split it one stack at a time. 
And next on this list is actually gonna be the idea of new item targeting and switching build plans. So say for example, you've finished your build and it's time for you to start working on building traps. The thing is you can't fit traps in your save plan and maybe you're not comfortable with the trap recipes yet. So the way you can target this to put it into your save plan after the fact is by pressing B to open the item menu. Once in the item menu, similar to the catalog in the main menu, you can navigate to whatever it is you wanna target, select it, and press the target button. And what that will do is it will add it to your save plan in the top right, and it will mark all items needed to finish that with yellow triangles, similar to if it were an item in your save plan. Now, along the same lines of targeting a new item into your save plan, if you wanna change your save plan entirely, or maybe switch to a save plan that has all the traps and food that you wanna search for, you can do that in the top right. There's a little arrow next to your save plan that you can select to bring out a list of all the save plans you have saved for that character and that weapon. By selecting one of these save plans, it will load it in as if it were your save plan originally and will mark all items with a yellow triangle. These two features are really good for making sure your builds are very flexible. And if you're not sure about certain recipes, it can make it easier to build these things in the late game, such as traps, food, and other things. And of course, at number 10, I would simply recommend that you don't be afraid to try new builds and new characters. Overall, it's good to diversify yourself. You'll learn a lot about matchups that you didn't know if you just played one character over and over. Seeing these matchups from a different side can give you ideas of where weaknesses are. You'll understand that some characters maybe have longer cooldowns than others, and they're more item dependent than others. Maybe you find out that a character you've originally struggled with has a weaker early game, and now you can start targeting that weakness earlier on rather than just waiting to the late game where you lose. All these sorts of things become clearer as you play more of the cast and try different weapons and different builds. Playing just one character or one build over and over can really only teach you so much, and you'll really learn more about the game just by playing a wide variety. It's okay to not be afraid of failure. And that just about covers all 10. If any of these tips helped you out in the game, feel free to let me know. If there was something that you wish you had known earlier on in the game but I didn't cover here, feel free to leave it in the comments, and I'm sure someone else could benefit from it. But in any case, thank you guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.